Coming up on the Open Alliance Show, 6838 X-Shark, one of our featured teams coming in from Turkey A will be here to talk about their incredible progress so far, including a, a detailed or full CAD model. I love this robot. Uh, taking an amalgamation of the qualified Quokas and 2910 Jack and the Bots, uh, a lot of great inspiration from there. We'll be talking about their under the bumper intake, showcasing some of their completed superstructure that they've been working on as well, and a couple other really cool prototypes too. Let's find out more at 6838 here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Coming up on our first episode this week of the Open Alliance show, we have 6838 X-Shark coming in from Turkey A, and I'm so excited to speak with this team, their progress. I've been following their OA build blog on Chief Delphi, and you all have been making some phenomenal progress so far, both in your CAD work, starting to get some assemblies together. I saw uh, just your drive base coming together, too, and we'll be talking about that. So let's hop right in. we got a couple of fantastic students. If you don't mind, can you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on your team, and we're going to hop right into some CAD work. I'm Mohammed. I'm the team captain for this year. Uh, and I'm Gökalp, and I'm the ex-captain. So you have a lot of great CAD work uh, that we're going to be starting out with on here. Uh, pretty much a full assembly, it looks like, guys. So walk me through your current progress right now, and uh, let's drive through some of the major uh, subsystems that you've uh, been putting together. Yeah. So our robot pretty much has an arm, a shooter, and an intake. We're still working on our climb as of right now. Uh, it's pretty much inspired by unqualified Quacos and last year's 2910 robot. So we wanted something that pivots so we could shoot from different points and uh, also shoot into the AMP. And we wanted to minimize that also to one degree of freedom. So an arm seemed as the best option for us, and that's what we went for. Uh, as I mentioned, if we were to look a bit more specifically into the arm, it's very similar to 2910s. Uh, yeah, it has a 148 ratio and it's driven by two falcons. Do you want to talk about the shooter? Um, so in our shooter, that we mainly focused on two subsystems. So we combined the feeder and shooter system at uh, one plate, mostly. We put a banded plate at the bottom and um, put, some, put two rollers in the uh, upper side uh, with a 775. And we have we have mostly inspired by uh, Super Nerds uh, shooter with both sides of the wheels. Uh, we, it's, and uh, they are driven by two Neo motors. So um, our shooter is getting the um, nose directly from the uh, directly from the intake. That's why we wanted our uh, feeder to be uh, separate from the shooter. Um, wheels actually so if we were look to look a bit more specifically at the intake uh, initially we weren't thinking about an under the bumper intake then we saw grasshoppers and it looked like it would really work out well so we went with that uh, firstly we started with a three roller intake however like the transformation of the object from the intake to the shooter was a bit hard so we decided to add a fourth roller as you can see right here. Uh, another question was how we were going to center the note. So for that, we came up with a bearing, a passive bearing, uh, pretty much mechanism that just tries to center the note. We haven't still tried this out. Uh, we are currently going to prototype it, hopefully this week, mm -hmm. and we'll be posting the results soon. We think with a bit of iterations, it'll definitely uh, maybe show some good results. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it for the intake. And for our climb, we're still doing some research. We are a bit in the air right now. We aren't sure if we want to do a telescopic climb, maybe one-sided, or if we want to also, you know, climb with our arm. Uh, so we're still a bit behind on that part, but hopefully that's going to also finish this week, and we're going to be starting with the manufacturing as soon as possible. So a few things I want to break down uh, on this uh, progress so far, which looks awesome, by the way. Um, 
So let's start me out from, uh, let's get caught up a little bit on goals and objectives for what you've been doing. Um, when you were looking, you mentioned you're doing this amalgamation between qualified quokas and uh, the Jack in the Bot from last year as well too. What made you like come up with like, hey, that's the direction that we want to go with when you were analyzing what the crescendo game was? So uh, our main goals from the game are being uh, as fast as possible and uh, be the mo and do the most optimized robot so we can stabilize our um, statistics and always increase them actually. That's why uh, we wanted to mainly um, to shoot from the reason for that um, is that mainly for our manufacturing of opportunities we had. Um, that's why we we saw that we can uh, manufacture these parts easily uh, and make them work pretty well. I think that's why we choose uh, and go with that. Go with that. Um, and the other thing I want to ask you about is the, uh, the the transfer process from that under, under the bumper intake going into what your shooter is. Um, you, you mentioned you've done, you know, you're, you're getting towards that testing phase on there, but have you looked at like how that, how the uh, note is going to conform in regards to getting from your intake to where your actual uh, shooter and into, and your mechanism is there? So we, we really want to test this. We still haven't got the chance to. Uh, we, we are going to be able to iterate on our shooter a lot more this year because we're doing it in-house manufacturing with our CNC. So we haven't really fully tested our uh, transformation of the note from the intake to the shooter yet. This is how it looks like as of right now. This year, since we have in-house manufacturing, we're going to be able to change the shooter as much as possible, as much as we want. And uh, we'll be able to play with that a bit here and there. Right now, it looks like this. It's a four roller intake with the feeder roller of the shooter be acting like kind of as a fifth roller in this state. Uh, yeah, so our intake is also very focused on being touch and grab this year as well. And pretty, pretty much, much after it becomes, it becomes from, from the zero position, position, it takes the object and we can change our uh, degree of freedom to shoot into the AMP like this in this current state. Uh, or we can shoot from variable distances if we also like to. And can we take a look at your your belly pan? Uh, talk to me more about that. You, know, you mentioned you're doing a lot of custom manufacturing in-house for that. Talk to me about uh, what uh, that's comprised of and, and kind of how that process works for doing the manufacturing. Um, so in our belly pan, uh, we just uh, made a simple structure which uh, uh, which is like um, is whole around our uh, chassis actually. Also, uh, our most problem we had with our belly pan is the uh, position of our uh, battery. So we put our battery vertically uh, bit, uh, under the pivot point. Uh, it looks vertically, so we add some additional plates under the bumper again. Uh, uh, and that's it, I think. The last thing I want to uh, just talk about real quick is looking at your OA blog. Um, you've done some 3D printing um, as well, too, uh, with us. Well, anything that kind of mentioned your current progress from that standpoint? And, and what are you actually using 3D printing for or looking to use it for? Um, so actually, that is the 3D print part that I did last night. Uh, that's actually for our um, intake uh, pulley. So. Um, we again use uh, double-sided belts as last year um, because we had some uh, experience and uh, had good good um, data we got. We again used uh, this type of uh, part, 3D printed part again. We mainly using uh, using a slot point for uh, strengthening the uh, belts. That's why. Um, we just wanted to make it easier not, not to get out because last year the both sides of the pulley is open. That's why it can sometimes uh, get out of the pulley and that's affecting that. Uh, that's why uh, this time we went, we wanted to make some improvements on our 3D printed parts. Um, similar to that pulley actually, we also would like to make some uh, similar things on our uh, passive centering uh, part in the uh, intake. Uh, we will just uh, inserting the bearings and the shafts while printing it, I hope.
can actually show you that right now. We try and take it. Try and take it. Sorry, just give us a minute. Sure. So this is the current state of our passiving mechanism. So we have five bearings. We're still working on it. So we have step inserts here. Uh, so yeah, pretty much it looks good right now. We still haven't tested it. We are going to soon enough, hopefully. Yeah. So, so for now, it looks uh, really heavy because of the nuts and bolts here, actually. That's why we just uh, put these uh, insides uh, of the parts we made. So with uh, UV by using less, less shaft and reduce the weight, of course. Uh, and we put some step inserted in the parts so that we can attach to the intake plate. Uh, this is a great progress so far, guys. I can't wait to see how that testing works out uh, for your team. Hopefully, it works great. It, it looks awesome, so I, I really hope it does. Uh, right behind you, we have a lot of superstructure right behind there. I think we got to bring that on screen and talk to me more yeah. about uh, some of the assembly progress of what you've been doing so far. Uh, so we just got most of these parts today, actually. We did this all today. Uh, we've almost finished our superstructure tomorrow, hopefully, or in the next couple of few days. We're going to be putting on our swerves mm -hmm. and our intake pieces and our shooter will also be complete. We can maybe add that it's all uh, steel. It's all made of, made out of steel, um, all the uh, two profiles, belly pan, and the other uh, profiles we had. So how much does that weigh currently right now, do you know about? Not not really, actually, but it's <laughs> a bit heavy. Well, we but, to but you're going to have such yeah. a low CG from that, right? Like, by I think by going steel, I think that's such a great, you know, way to go because you have the weight. You're going to – I mean, the bot looks so tiny. It's crazy. I mean, you yeah, mentioned yeah. talking about taking inspiration from 2910. I can definitely see it uh, with yeah, that as, as we, well, too. Yeah, as we estimated, like, our robots will be around 40 kilos or less, maybe, because uh, we don't have any additional parts um, – heavy additional parts as I can add in our arm and um, shooter. That's why yeah, it can be helpful to maintain our center of gravity while uh, shooting from different angles. Exactly. What are some uh, next steps from your team looking at this next week here? Uh, what do you really want to accomplish and get done uh, as we're, we're already halfway through the build season? So uh, for the next week, we hope to finish the whole mechanical assembly and just yeah, get into programming and electric. Hopefully this week we're going to be finishing our shooter and intake, and by next week our arm should be done. Well, this looks phenomenal uh, so far, guys. We can't wait to see uh, how everything turns out. Make sure you're following 6838 Shark on their Open Alliance blog on Chief Delphi. Uh, one of our featured teams has been making absolutely phenomenal progress. Uh, I love everything you're doing in your posts, by the way. Such great detail in your what you're doing and how you're doing it. Lessons learned. All that stuff is great stuff to uh, have as well, too. So thank you so much for uh, providing that to the community. And uh, make sure you keep an eye out uh, for 6838. Uh, what's your first uh, regional that you're going to? That's going to be Istanbul Regional, uh, 5 to 7 March. Can't wait to see it. So thanks a lot, guys, for uh, taking the time, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Have, Thank a nice you. Day. Have a nice day. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.